Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy YouTube Blue coming back at you again on this Sunday morning, beautiful Sunday morning. <sighs> Guys out here riding their motorcycles, riding their motorcycles. I don't know. I always wanted a bike, but I feel like if I get a motorcycle, you know, with the luck I got, somebody gonna hit me because you know these people can't drive out here. And that's and I know a lot of you guys are in different states still. These people can't drive. Like they don't pay attention and be hitting other cars. But you know, you hit a bike, it's a whole different story. But that's a that's a whole other thing. But um as we completed I guess I guess a week of training camp, but I mean a lot of it was just, you know, drills, warm up stuff, getting tested, things of that nature, because you know, as training camp goes on, because we're in this pandemic still. Um, players are still getting tested every day. Uh, I know the Lions, Matt Stafford, tested positive, so he's going to be out for at least uh, two weeks. But, um, you know, as long as these guys are back before the start of regular, regular season, you know. So, Cowboys did wave a couple of guys. First, I'm going to start with the ones that you probably don't even know their names. <laughs> they waved the extra long snapper that we got, but we already knew that was going to happen. That was, you know, they just signed him for training camp stuff to, because they know that, you know, we got LP Latticer, who's been strong for, what, 15, 16 years now? He ain't going nowhere. He's like 41. He's like the oldest one on the roster. He ain't going nowhere. As long as LP don't make no mistakes. He will be the long snapper forever for the Cowboys. They will they will keep signing him if he wants to be on the roster. That's pretty much how that's gonna go. But um, yeah. So the guy's name is I think his name is Joe Fortunato or something like that. So yeah, um, that was the long snapper that they had for training camp or whatever. So they went ahead and waved him, and it sucks because these guys didn't even get a chance to compete to do anything. But you know, it's all good. Uh, so Joe's gone. They also um, waved. Um, what's his name? Uh, rookie linebacker Azur Kamara. So he's gone. I got, again, I know you guys don't know who the hell neither one of those guys are, but it's okay. It's okay. That's why us YouTubers, when we talk about it, you're like, okay, well, uh. and like it doesn't really matter. They're just trying to trim, trim the fat, basically, at this point um, to get from 90 to 80 players because, you know, we have to have. All the teams have to be down to 80 players by August 16th. So, Cowboys started early like most teams did. Um, just cutting their cutting their fat. Just cutting the fat off. Now, once their roster is set, then they have to figure out who of those amongst those players are going to be on the practice squad. Now, we do have another guy that uh, is in um, what they call COVID protocol. Uh, Savion Smith, the cornerback that we got from the XFL. I think he originally was, uh, quote me if I'm wrong, but I think he was originally drafted by the Panthers, I want to say. And then he, uh, I guess, was on the team for the year, and then he went to the XFL, played for the Houston Roughnecks. And um, now with the Cowboys this offseason when he got signed. So we know how big that cornerback room is right now. <laughs> with all those guys impeding to get roster spots at this point. So, you know, as guys drop off, it'll be easier for guys to make the roster. So, um, we know that John V. Johnson is already on that list. We don't know if, we still don't know if John V. Johnson, the wide receiver, we don't know if he tested positive or if he was around someone that um, had, you know, was, was infected. That part was not express they didn't they didn't express which one it was now um Savion Smith is in the protocol now um I, I assume he tested positive so both of those guys I mean John Vay will probably be back before him because he's he's been out a couple of days longer but you know I think it's like two weeks or something like that so basically 10 days um 10 days off the bat if you don't have any symptoms I think it's 42 hours after you get tested again, if you have no symptoms, they'll bring you back. If you had symptoms, it's 72 hours 
after the te after the next testing if you tested negative. So, and if you tested negative after 72 hours, you come back, you're good to go. So, uh, hopefully, we get Savion back. Uh, I just want to see these guys compete. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want I don't want it to be a situation where it's like, oh, this guy got on the roster because there was nobody else. You know what I mean? Um, that's pretty much it. So, I just I feel like I feel like. Um, I love the competition, especially around this time with training camp. I want to see who's jockeying for position because, again, there's always that one guy that nobody's thinking about that all of a sudden makes a splash on the team. Now, the biggest thing I want to talk about in the video was the releasing of our kicker, Kai Forbath, right? So the Cowboys released Kai Forbath. I think it was yesterday or the day before. But um, the days are going by so fast, I don't know. I'll be forgetting. Uh... Yeah, so they released Kai Forbath. Now, we talked about this all offseason. They kept they kept both guys on the roster for four months. And we knew that one of these guys was going to beat the other one out. Now, if you look at it on paper, clearly Greg Zerline had the upper hand because they gave him a three-year, $7.5 million guaranteed contract. So, oh, and did like two and a half something million of a guarantee. So... Kai Forbath only had a one-year contract, and then they re-signed him for another one year. So his contract was dismal compared to what Greg Zerline came and signed. Because I know that when it happened, we were like, well, dang, we already got Kai Forbath. But you got to realize, this team always wanted Greg Zerline, even before we got Bones as the special teams coach. Now, John Fossil, Bone, John Bones Fossil, being the special teams coordinator, now, because he, you know, was at the Rams with Greg Zerline, he knows that kicker very well. He wants his kicker with him. So that that was a big defying factor there. But also the Cowboys like Greg the leg before. Now, what I want to say about that whole situation is you got to weigh your options here, right? Because what we don't want is another uh, Brett Maher situation, right? So look at it like this. You got Kai Forbath, right? Kai Forbath, when he originally came out, um, I think he was undrafted, I think. So he came to the Cowboys. We had him his rookie year. I think we uh, we cut him because we signed – because that was Dan Bailey's rookie year too. And Dan Bailey, I think, was drafted, I, I want to say. I got to go back and look at that. But um, I'm not sure if he was or not. But either way, they, they could have both been undrafted. I forgot. But um, either way, Dan Bailey came in. He was kicking really good, and they ultimately signed Dan Bailey. Now, because I think the the best kicker that we had before Dan Bailey was probably uh, was it Matt Beeler? Was this, is it Matt Beeler? It was Beeler, whatever. I I like Beeler. He uh he started messing up towards the end of his career. You know but that's what happens with kickers. They get those injuries and then they just they're never the same again. But um, David Beeler, that's what it was. David Beeler. So when David Beeler was on the team, he had a strong leg. And he was big as an ox, though. He was like the size of a linebacker. Like, when he would come out there, he looked like he was like the size of Leighton Van Der Esch out there kicking the ball. Just imagine Leighton Van Der Esch kicking uh, field goals. That's that's what that's what David Beeler looked like, if you guys remember who that was. So, yeah, that was I guess that was the last of the Mohicans until um, we got, until we got um, Dan Bailey. And then when we got Dan Bailey... We've had Dave Bailey for so long that, like, we stopped, like, we would watch a game, we would watch the team score, and we already knew we was going to get the extra point, but we didn't even look at the screen. We were like, we'll be talking, people were eating, congregating, drinking their, their, their beer and such, and nobody's paying attention to the kicker. When we got Brent Maher, everybody was on the TV like, oh, my God, is he going to make this kick? What's going to happen? So... We don't want that situation again. We want to go back to being comfortable again with our kickers out there on the field. You know what I mean? Um, one thing about Greg Zerline, we know what he's capable of. We know that he's a very good kicker. He got coined the name Greg the Leg for a reason, right? But, again, he had injuries like like um, Dan Bailey did. When I tell you guys before, like as a kicker, man, first of all, it's hard as hell to kick a field goal. That's one. Two, you know, you had these hamstring injuries, you have these groin muscle itch, injuries, any of these soft tissue injuries in your leg, thigh area, it affects the way that you kick. And that's what happened with Dan Bailey. I felt like the Cowboys gave up on him too early. He goes with the Vikings, and he plays well with the Vikings. And I believe he's still with the Vikings, Dan Bailey. Um, 
they they got rid of Kai Forbath. Kai Forbath came in last three games of the season, went 10 for 10. The boy didn't miss, right? <laughs> but every kicker misses one or two here and there. You know what I mean? Even Dan Bailey missed some even before his injury. So, I mean, no kicker is perfect, obviously, but you, you, you want them to be close enough, right? I think that well, whoever picks up Kyle Forbath is going to be happy because they're also getting a good veteran kicker. But the Cowboys ultimately like Greg the leg better, obviously. But hopefully that doesn't turn around and kick him in the butt because hopefully uh, Greg Zerline is free from all his soft tissue injuries or, or just injuries in general so that he can come out and be consistent like Dan Bailey was. Because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for consistency. As long as you go out there, do what you're supposed to do. And, you know, John Fossil good for um, – doing some um, trickery things of that nature. Now, I, I proposed to you guys before about having both of those guys on the roster. I thought that would have been awesome, but, you know, with the rosters moving up to 55, they damn sure could have. But I think that they have other um, spots they need to fill for injury purposes um, and injury and COVID purposes, you know, because the luxury of having two kickers is, not, is very rare. You never see a team have two kickers on a roster. That's not normal. But in a COVID season like this, it probably wouldn't have been the perfect time because what if Greg DeLay gets, I don't want to say it, but I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to curse it. But, you know, what if somebody goes down and you're like, oh, jeez, we didn't, we didn't got rid of Kyle Forbath, what are we going to do? So it's almost like, you know, if you ask me for my opinion, that's that's basically how I feel about it. Um, I like Kyle Forbath and I like Greg DeLay. I like both of them. But my whole thing was if you were able to keep both of them, if it was possible, then I would have done it because of the you know pandemic that we're dealing with. There's a lot of different factors that play in that, especially those one position, a team type of positions like punter, kicker, special teams, punter, kicker, long snapper. Like you only have one of each on a team. You, you never have two unless you got one on the practice squad. Now, we know that Kai Forbath doesn't have practice squad eligibility, so that's another reason why they didn't keep him. So somebody's going to get him. He's going to play well for them. Cowboy fans are going to grovel because they're like, oh, shit, I'm going to kill Kai Forbath. Why don't want to get rid of Kai Forbath? I like Mr. Kai Forbath. Why are you getting rid of Kai Forbath? I like Mr. Kai Forbath. So with that being said, you know, you, you kind of like, Dan, if you do, and Dan, if you don't. But that's how football is. It's a lottery. Even when you draft players in the first round, they could be a bust or they can be <laughs> great. You never know. But uh, let me know what you guys think about the Kai Forbath releasing. Um, but that's my take on it. But, you know, hopefully hopefully everything goes well and we're, we don't have to worry about it. And Greg DeLay comes out, plays well, and he's healthy all season and we're good. But if that turns around to bite him in the butt, oh, fans are going to be all over that one. Because I know how y'all do. Ooh, Lord. Y'all be on us hard. So I already know what that's going to be like. But anywho, let me know what you guys think about that. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. And my birthday is tomorrow. I hate that my birthday is on a Monday, though. And I think, and, and I got to work tomorrow. So, like, I think this is the first year that I'm going to be working on my birthday. So, that, that's going to be interesting. First year of my whole life I'm working on my birthday. Because of COVID, I, I had to, I don't have no PTO hours because of COVID. So, but it's all good, though. Thank God I have a job. That's, that's, that's the biggest thing. I'm thanking God that I have a job. Still employed, um, even though we've had furlough days. But I hopefully everything goes back to normal as far as the job situation goes. Hopefully I'm not off anymore because you know these these bills are still coming. <laughs> the bills ain't stopping. But let me know what you guys think about it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a live stream for my birthday tomorrow before Mark does his because I know. Mark's, Mark's live stream days is Monday, so I try not to do that on a Monday. But maybe I'll do one earlier in the day, a live stream or whatever. Um, do a birthday live stream tomorrow or whatever. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But anywho, it's your boy E2Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to you all soon. Peace.